There's something very exciting about seeing four of Francis Hodgkin's works that span pretty well the whole career in Europe. And starting with this beautiful early watercolour of Codepec on Co, painted in 1901. Hodgkins had only been in England for three months, but she didn't like it. She found it dark and gloomy, and she had met up with Norman Garston, who was an English painter who worked down in New Lynn, just near St. Ives. They would get together for criticism. And this is what every artist needs. You're working on your own. You need that feedback from other people. And so it was an invaluable time for her. Hodgkins preferred a quiet corner where she could observe what people were doing and they wouldn't necessarily be aware of her. Now, Codebeck in 1901 was famous for its very beautiful half-timbered houses. And in this watercolour, you can see the line of them, higgledy piggledy moving off into the distance on the right-hand side. This work, I think, is the culmination of all her studies because it's slightly more sophisticated in its approach. But so you have the dramatic backdrop of the building, but it's these people here that Hodgkins focuses on. Hodgkins has perfectly encapsulated that little human moment, which takes a timeless village and places it in a specific moment. And she does another very clever thing. This shed has got a little warm ochre frame, which looks like it could be a window, it could be a door. But that color, that heightened pinky, rosy color compared to these blues catches the eye and leads you into depth. And this is the cleverest thing I think that Hodgkins done, does in a work like this. And which she carries through her whole career. In none of her works do you see it all. You have to look, and often in her later works, look very closely. But with this particular work, it's like a little moment in time. Very beautiful. And I think probably the most successful painting that she did in that period. When you look at the painting next door, it's so different. You'd almost think it was by a different artist. But what you've got to do is travel through time. We go from 1901 to sometime in the 1920s. We can't be exactly sure. This is painted in a little French fishing village called Martigues. And it is the most simple fishing village. You compare the both in France, but you compare the busyness of those historical buildings with these simple fishermen's houses. This building, although she's absolutely paired it back, is in fact a church. And in front of them, there is this beautiful block of water now, it was when Hodgkins went to Morocco in 1903 that she first started to understand what art, art movement was going to replace Impressionism for. She talks to Morocco of you know, going outside to paint in the brilliant hot sun, really hot sun. And she's looking at a white wall, which appears to have touches of lilac and green and yellow in the shadow. And then the sun moves and suddenly it's just a white wall. The colour's just flown up into the air and disappear. And so it's, you're capturing again a moment, but in a completely different way. But what she is also fascinated with here is water. And with water and light, you get reflection. Hodgkins also uses the masts of the boats very cleverly. You've got a strong vertical on the right, but this mast, leads up and away out of sight to the left, but also draws attention to the little cupola on top of the church. Down in the south, you get this wonderful iridescent blue, but it also allows her to get this, to capture the sort of way in which the mast has been tied up. And that motif jumps forward into future paintings as well. Again, there's a kind of similarity, but you've got reflection here and you've got but solid walls. Look what happens when you come to this word, side entrance. This painting was done in Bridge North in Shropshire, which again was a very popular spot for Hodgkins. There's a high town, the river flows below, and then beautiful flat fields. She, by this time, preferred 
absolutely that combination of simple buildings, the movement of water, but also the action that takes place on water, boats passing up and down. And the Severn is a very important trade waterway historically in England. Whereas most of her paintings have been done on the other side of these buildings, here she goes to the back of the building. So instead she's focusing our eye through that narrow lane. The pergola has been transformed. She's drawn it up. She's playing with that composition. What it does is it softens the very block-like angular structures of the buildings either side. Hodgkins became famous at the end of the 1920s because she introduced the notion of still life in a landscape. That introduction of the pergola and of flowers brings the natural world, the softer world of nature, if you like, back in. And you get that reflected in this urn with flowers growing in it on the right hand side. And she doesn't draw the uh, little, there's a tiny little park on the opposite side. Here she decides to float the buildings into that very narrow gap. But by doing that, our eye is led into deep distance. Uh, you, otherwise, it, it, it wouldn't have that, uh, that, that invitation to move into the scene itself. This is what is so rewarding in spending time looking at Francis Hodgkin's painting. Because the more you look, the more you start to see. You won't always be able to identify what you're looking at. But it, it animates it and it challenges you. Another important aspect is the way in which she's starting to use cross hatching, not as an element of the building, but as an element of design. And it's that that you will pick up again in this absolute masterpiece, uh, which she's called pergola. Now, pergolas are built structures, but in this instance, she very wittily takes a pruned, very heavily pruned tree, and that becomes the pergola. That also leads us through to the sea. This was painted in Tosinamar, and I think probably, as she liked to do at the time, she said she loved to work from her memories while they still remain fresh in her mind. But she has captured the far end of the beach of La Palma at Tosadamara, where there is the one river that runs down to the sea. See this wall here? This is a lapua, or then in, in Spanish, a lavadero. And this is the same structure that you get coated at Hong Kong. It's a public washing place. You find them all through French and Spanish villages. And this is a place where women come together to, to wash the clothes, but also to sort out everything that needs sorting out in the village. This is a very sophisticated composition. We recognize the barrel, the water barrel, uh, and we recognize the house, but look what she's done with it. She's, sort, she's anthropomorphized. It's as if the house is somewhat shocked that she's painted it. It's got this wonderful expression, and yet we know absolutely the simplicity of the structure, you know, the sort of what almost will be tile roof, uh, but that, that sort of structure harks back to the simple buildings that you get in the south of France as well. I'm also fascinated by the gourds, which I think they are. Here, what she does is she floats them up so they're not attached to the pergola. It's almost like they're Chinese lanterns hanging from the arch itself. Uh, and that makes me think about light. You have a very soft blue, because she's working with this wonderful gouache in the uh, lavadero itself. But then you, the blue increases in intensity. There's a sort of almost surreal edge to this work. And I've often wondered if her Spanish work, she, you know, I think she's always thinking about what other artists have done. There's no doubt when she's in France, She's thinking about Braque and Picasso and Chagall, all those artists who both worked in Paris and were drawn to the south of France in the summer. But I think when she went to Spain, in the back of her mind, there were also artists like Dali. Now, she didn't want to ever imitate, no good artist does. 
But it's that notion of being able to move things around in the landscape. It's quite possible that that was in the back of her mind when she painted this work.